All right, so um, we created a little interface last time, something like this, and it allowed us to input the number of um, objects we'd like to create, the radius, and then we click this cube button, even though it spawned one cube in multiple spheres. Let's go ahead and take a look at something called a class. And within that, we're gonna look at a, um, an initialization method, which is pretty cool. So I'm actually gonna click here to create a new tab. I'm gonna go with a Python tab here. And uh, we'll call this, um, let's save this. And we'll call this uh, sphere maker class. Now notice I'm putting class in there as part of the name so that whoever sees this knows it's a class and then whatever it does, this is a sphere maker. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to save this. And what I tend to do is I make my class name the same as the name of the file. So I'm going to first import in my Maya command stuff. And a lot of times you'll see where they'll do Maya commands as CMDS. Um, so whatever you want to do. Now, the way you define a class is just by writing the word class and then whatever the name of the class is with a colon and then you hit enter. Now, what's important is there's an um, initialization method. And what this does is this runs um, at the start of your application. So the way that looks is you write diff, and then to the right of the zero key, underscore, underscore, initialize, underscore, underscore, and then parentheses, colon, and then hit enter. Now, when this initializes, we want to put in one parameter, one uh, variable that we're going to be using that's going to be passed around. You can name this whatever you want, but in average, they just call it, um, or more common name rather, they call it self. And I'm going to show you a quick example of this. Like I mentioned, this gets called right when this script fires off. So for example, say we create a, a place that uh, we're going to store our window to. So self window equals commands dot window. And in there, uh, we have a title that, like before, and that equals, um, you know, like, I don't know, whatever we want to do, make sphere. And then the width and height are the same as before. So width, height, and I'm going to go 600 by 600 this time. I'm going crazy. Now, all I have to do is use that commands dot show window that we used before. Now, you might be like, why do we keep retyping this? For me, it's more about muscle memory, and the more I do it, the better I get. So if I rewrite from scratch over and over again, I personally learn better that way. So I also, uh, so just that might be, if you're wondering, like, why, do I, why doesn't he just copy and paste it? That is more of a production way of doing it. But for me, I really want to... Um, kind of drive this back in. So back to the point of the initialization method. So what I'm doing here is I created a window essentially here. I'm calling that window to show it. Now notice I never call this method, but when I run this, uh, let me save and run it, uh, I get an error. And I think, let's see, what's the reason I'm getting this error? Command show window. Um, catch window. Let me save that and rerun. Okay, yeah, I mean, it It popped up now. I think part of the reason could be, let's see, self window. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's working now. So essentially what happens at this entry point is as we define this, this method gets called first and what it's doing is it's calling essentially. Um, it's creating this window called make spheres, which is here. Um, as part of that entry point. Now, what's interesting again is, let's kind of bring this down. If I execute this, we still have the issue of having multiple windows. So we're gonna have to get back in and add that delete UI stuff. But anyway, within this class, like I said, you're not calling this method, it's called automatically, which is pretty cool. So before this Windows thing here, let's go ahead and add our commands. Um, we wanna put everything in one column, so our column layout and as i mentioned before i tend to save and run it to make sure that it's always working so you're going to hear that control enter a lot so forgive me for that and then part of this is we're going to reference again the self 
and we'll create a variable called num spheres for a number of spheres and we'll make that equal to the the field so commands dot int field and the minimum value we want for them to create for our field is the same as before so the minimum value is an integer and it's going to be equal to one and that popped up here and then let's make a button button to create our spheres and so commands dot button and that label equals make spheres and then we are going to have it call a method and that method is going to again refer to a uh, define we're going to define a function over here so I tend to um, um, do not forget to complete command I do this a lot because if I forget then I'm, I'm, I'm fumbling around for a while trying to figure out what is the thing so let's call this one make spheres and it is equal to self we're passing self into this um, and remember this is one parameter that we're passing in from here so for example we would do command equals self dot and then the name of this just make spheres so now when we click this button it's going to call this actual make spheres button and if you remember from last time um, star args just means we're taking in many arguments it's able to store many arguments and then we're just going to make a variable called number and that is going to be equal to a number field so I'm going to save some time by just copying this and changing it and um, this one is going to be a uh, so this is also going to be a field but remember we're making the spheres here so this is the number of spheres that we're going to pass in. So we're going to do, or we're going to get, so it's itself dot um, num spheres, which is this right here, is our first parameter. So it's storing that. And then we want to be able to get that information, uh, or set rather the information. Um, and then that value equals true. And we're going to, um, if you remember last time, we're going to use a for loop. And this for loop um, is linear. So it goes through a list of objects. So the list of objects is a range. And the range we're going to go to is from 0, which means nothing, obviously, nil, to the number of objects the person inputs into our field. And then we want to move those objects a certain amount. So commands dot move and it's going to be based on the number of objects uh, times some value so I think we did three last time or something and now this is in the X so we don't want to move it in the well let's go ahead and do like two here and then two so you can see it moving in the X Y and Z I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna run this and let's zoom out a little bit and see uh, sphere make class invalid syntax okay where did I go wrong let's see space these out that's not really probably the problem we have a number maybe I should spell quarry correctly maybe that's probably part of it and let me peruse over this and see what other errors I made um, here's a big one one we uh, for when we were doing our for loop I'm supposed to put a colon here so I forgot that colon and I also never even made the spheres so commands dot poly sphere that would probably help and let's save that and oh there we go it ran okay so let's make some spheres let's see what happened so now when I make 10 spheres and they are pretty small because we didn't do the should have did the radius but you can see they're off in the ether right so let's click on these because we did the x y and z values so it shot up one on the y and z and then it just spaced itself out as it was going and you might be wondering well why did it only go up on the x from this to this right or let's see here's polysphere one to here yeah why did it only shoot up once and it didn't just keep going 
The reason for that is because we used I times, and I is the number that's going up in our range. So let me go back to that to show you what I'm talking about. If we wanted it to continuously move across, um, and actually let's make the radius of our spheres bigger. Radius equals like five or something so we could see it better. Let's rerun that and see if, uh, let's uh, delete them out. Yeah, there we go. So you can see they're much larger, maybe too big. All right, let's undo that. So, uh, so um, commands, we're going to create a polysphere, and then we're going to move them. Now, notice we're doing i times 3. So for i in range, so we're starting off here at the first element in our range, and then we go all the way to whatever the number is. So if somebody types in they want 10 spheres, it's i to the end of 10. So if we do i times 2, and then we do, you know, we'll just copy this a couple of times. And actually that range might be too big. So let's do i times 1.5. And we'll copy this here. So now in the x, y, and z axis, we're going to shift them across and up and across. So like, um, and let's do this at two, that's a little too big. So let's save that and run that. Let's bring this back in. Now when I hit make spheres, uh, oh, you know what, it only made that initial one. So we're actually adjusting the value of just one sphere. Let's see if I get rid of this for a second. Let's rerun this. And we change this. Oh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Let's, sorry. That's my fault. I'm not changing the actual value in there. Silly me. All right, here we go. So um, we should leave that back in. Radius equals three, maybe? Five was kind of huge. Now, when I run this, I change this to 10 spheres, you can see. It now goes across because we're adding that I value across to the object. See that? Um, so that's sort of a nice, um, in, that's a nice introduction to the definition method, I'm sorry, the initialization method rather, and uh, classes.